I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about statistics. This video is the first video in a new playlist talking about statistics. The previous video uh, or playlist will be up here. That playlist was all about probability. So now we're moving on to talk about statistics, that is gathering data and trying to summarize that data and to then say something about the population that that data came from. And so that's what we're going to be talking about in this video and in a whole series of videos that will follow. This particular slide set, which is available down below in a PDF format, will actually be over the course of four different videos. All right, this particular video is trying to give a brief introduction to the field of statistics, as well as to what a statistic of data is. All right, so let's start with that field. So what is statistics? The field of statistics is the study of data collection, analysis, interpretation, presentation, and organization. All right at least as it was on Wikipedia back in the day. So basically what we're talking about when we talk about the field of statistics is everything having to do with data, right? We have this new term called data science, right? That's very similar to statistics. There are two particular uh, phases that you might go through in terms of performing statistics or doing statistics within this field of statistics. And those two areas are descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Within descriptive statistics, you have just sort of uh, the numbers that you're used to seeing, like mean, median, and mode, right? Those are statistics. Uh, you might have heard of uh, quartiles or quantiles or percentiles. Those are all statistics. But also, there's a broader category here that would include graphical statistics. So you might have things that seen things like box plots, histograms, scatter plots, and so forth. Right? Those are all these descriptive statistics. In this course and in this video series, we're not going to focus on these kind of statistics. We are going to talk about them a bit, right? But we assume that you've had a background in some introductory course about these kind of statistics. You've learned what the mean is, you've learned what the medians, you've learned what the mode is. And we can move on to say, how are these statistics used when we're actually practicing within the field of statistics? When we're actually doing data analyses. And the way that they're commonly used is through something called inferential statistics. And inferential statistics, or performing an inference, really means to be making a statement from the sample of data that you've collected to the broader population as a whole. All right, if we're going to make a statement about a population, then we need to define what the population is. And so very broadly, the population is just going to be the entire collection of all the units of interest. So for instance, you might be interested in saying something about the population of US people. And so all the people in the US, that would be your population. Maybe instead you're interested in big foam dice, right? And so that would be your population is all these big foam dice. Maybe you're interested in something from your research. Here in Iowa, we talk a lot about corn and corn yield. And so maybe uh, all farmland in Iowa, that's the population that's of interest. Now from that population, any particular characteristic of that population is going to be called a parameter, right? So you might say something like, I don't know, mean weight of individuals in the United States, right? That mean over that whole population, that's the parameter. You might say uh, average corn yield over an acre across Iowa, right? That would be a parameter. Now, we never know that, well, rarely do we know the true value of a parameter because it takes into account all of the units in the population. Instead, what we do is we take a smaller subset of that population and we'll call that smaller subset a sample. So that's just some selection of units from the population. And we'll try to calculate those same quantities on that sample. So the weight of the individuals in the, in the sample or the uh, corn, average corn yield of the farms that happen to be in our sample. And when we calculate these quantities on our sample, we call those quantities the a statistic. Okay, and so more broadly, a statistic is just any function of the data that's in our sample. All right, so let's give a, a quick example here. So a quick example is suppose that we're, what we're really interested in is to understand at Iowa State University, of, amongst the graduate student population, uh, we have the population of all the routers that they have in use. Not the routers that are stuck in closets or aren't being used, but all the routers that are in use. And so what we might be interested in is to understand the proportion of those routers that have a gigabit speed. 
And so we might take a sample. Let's say we take a sample of the current course I'm teaching, this STAT 587-2 that these videos were produced for. Now, in that sample, we could look and say, or ask the students, how many of you have a gigabit router? And so that might be our statistic. And now what we would like is for that statistic in this class to be representative of the whole population. But this class, this STAT 587, is composed primarily of engineering graduate students, and the engineering graduate students may not be representative of the whole graduate student population here at Iowa State University. And so this sample is not really a great sample for which to draw that inference from the, pop from the sample to the population. One way that we can get a representative sample, or at least that we have a better chance of ensuring a representative sample, is something called random sampling. And we'll talk specifically about simple random sampling because it's the simplest. And a simple random sample is just a sample from that population where all subsets of the size that you're interested in are equally likely to be sampled. That is, they're equally likely to be part of the data set that you actually collect. And the key here is that random sampling ensures that the statistical conclusions that we want to make are valid. Okay, now that statement I made right there, that random sampling is broader. It doesn't need to just be simple random sampling. We could do stratified random sampling or something more sophisticated. It's just that the mathematics get more complicated. And for our purposes for this course and for these videos, uh, we don't need to go there. So let's just consider a simple random sample. So if we have our same exact example before, where we have this population of graduate students, uh, their routers at Iowa State University, and we're interested in the proportion that have routers with gigabit speed, rather than just taking this STAT 587 class and the students in it to provide uh, our sample, we are going to instead create a list of all the graduate students here at Iowa State University. We're going to give each of those individuals, maybe we get that list from the registrar or something, we're going to give each student in that list a uniform 0, 1 or a standard uniform random variable. And then we're going to sort the list by that uniform random variable so that we have those pseudo random numbers from lowest to large or smallest to largest. And we're just going to take the first 100 individuals on that list. Now we have a simple random sample of individuals in that graduate student population at Iowa State University. And we can ask them the same question that we asked on the previous slide, that is, how many of you have gigabit routers, right? But now this simple random sampling will assure that the statistics that we want to state about the sample are representative of the population. And now again, this doesn't happen perfectly every time, right? There obviously is some chance that in my sample, I could get the students that are all sitting here in 587. Um, but what happens is that the probabilities are with us uh, so that most of the time, we will get the results that we're expecting to get. Okay. Now, we uh, are going to make errors, as I was just sort of alluding to. And so we're going to split these errors into two categories. The first are going to be called sampling errors. And these are caused by the fact that we have a mere sample and not the entire population. But the good thing about sampling errors is that we can do something about them. And in particular, those errors that we get decrease as our sample size increases. And so if we think we're prone to error, we just gather more uh, of a sample, and then we can get closer and closer to the truth, which obviously makes sense. As our sample size gets bigger and bigger, right? we're going to get a larger and larger portion of the population, uh, and we're going to have less chance for error. Now, the other kind of error is called a non-sampling error. So this is not caused by the fact that we only have a sample, um, but it's caused by the fact that our sample might be taken inappropriately. Right? or that we're using the incorrect statistical technique. And now, obviously, we could use a better statistical technique, but if we took an incorrect uh, sample, right, or an inappropriate sample, uh, there's really not much that we can do statistically. Right? If your data are poor to begin with, there's no rescuing it from a statistical perspective. Right? So you want to think early and often about your population, and about how you're collecting the sample that you have for your data from that population. So that you're in the scenario where you can have possibly only sampling errors, but you've eliminated these non-sampling errors. All right, so in our previous example, right, we had students in STAT 587, right? And that would be in this, 
that would be an example of having a non-sampling error. That is, it's not just due to the fact that we have a sample, but that our sample itself is biased, in this case biased, toward engineering students because that's who are primarily in this course. All right, that's the first part of this video, or this is the first video. There's a second video where we start talking about statistics and estimators of population parameters. Hope to catch you there.